Well, guys, I have the full video online court hearing of Jamal Bryant. We not even call pastor over here. Jamal Bryant or Holy Whore. Those are the only two names he gets. But I'm going to let you guys see the full version of his court hearing and how the judge was pretty pissed off and thought that he should have a warrant issued for his arrest just for his nonchalant not showing up for court. This hasn't been the first time that he has not shown up for his own child support hearing. I mean, it's his kid is this is really disgusting, but you guys wanted to hear and see the full entire clip. It is, it's, it's about 50 minutes long. So here we go. So, um, Brian yes. from first. Yes, your honor. All right. So, um, were you able to make contact with Mr. Bryant? I did reach out. I wasn't able to reach him directly, though. But I sent him an email. I sent him the the Zoom information. Um, I tried calling a cell. It didn't go. It went straight to voicemail. All right, let's proceed. Okay. So, Your Honor, by way of background, um, again, as I mentioned this morning, this is a review and modification. Um, we are modifying um, a consent judge. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, prior order entered by this court in November, 2016. That order was civil action file number 16-CV-1613. Um, and just to kind of give you a full picture as to why we're here, um, our office filed our, our, our petition on July 8th, 2024. We sent the packet and our agency recommendation out to both parties on July 25th. At that time, are, both parties- How, how, how do we, you're saying someone asked for a modification? Yes, yes, your honor. Um, the custodial parent, Ms. Odom, requested a modification of that 16-CV-1613 uh, case number. Okay. And so- we we did the review and modification uh, process. We got information from both parties. We made our recommendation. We sent our recommendation out to both parties on July 25th, 2024. So at that time, and it says in the pleadings that both parties have 30 days to file an objection. Um, we did not hear from Ms. Odom by way of the other state until the 29th of August, which was past the objection period. At that time, someone at our, the case manager did give them erroneous information and said that she still could file an objection. So as a courtesy, that's why we went ahead and set the hearing date. But we were waiting for the court dates and because it was getting close to the end of the year, when he contacted me stating that he would be out of the country, but he wasn't objecting, we still wanted to proceed so as to not prolong the matter any longer. So, you know, just th that's kind of giving you the full picture as to kind of how we're here. Y yes, she filed an objection. She filed it after the deadline, though, and technically uh, it shouldn't have moved forward. But because of the error in our office, that's why we went ahead and still proceeded once we got your November court date. Okay. So as for the objection itself, um, you know, just big picture, and I'll let her speak directly to the court. But based upon the objection that she filed, there are no issues that we as the child support agency can remedy. Um, they weren't about the finances or the limited scope that the D Division of Child Support Services could really do anything about. That's part one. But part two is, the child support worksheet, and I can I can pull both of them up when you uh, the child support worksheet up if you want to uh, uh, after she speaks. Stated one number, and because there is an upward deviation from the prior case, the sixteen dash CV dash sixteen thirteen, um, Mr. Bryant was in agreement to keep that same upward deviation. So instead of the child support amount 
decreasing, it's still the higher amount, if that makes sense. No, sit. Okay. Okay. The worksheet, would it be easier for me to pull up the worksheet or do you want me to just tell you the numbers? You can pull up the worksheet, maybe look okay, at yeah. it. Um, the um, um, Jamal Harrison Bryant, is that um, um, Pastor um, Bryant yes. from first? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So he's out of the country because he was recently married, I saw. Is that it? No, he actually, um, it was a previously scheduled church with the trip. That's the information that he presented when he received the notice of hearing. Okay. Does he have an, he has, he doesn't have an attorney and no one's present here and your but your position is what you, you were okay with him not being here. Since, since he wasn't objecting, um, I told him that we would move forward. We'd present to the court moving forward since he's not objecting to the um recommendation or to the upward deviation then we would move forward if the court wanted us to continue it or reset it we would no. do so okay no i mean no he got notice and he chose not to be here that's his issue um yes. so I, the, I, i'm actually kind of bothered that he's not here because he did not have notice he did not have the excuse of the court the court did not relieve him um, and so he actually should be him not being present, to be honest with you, um, because it's not right. He has to be here. Um, but let, let's hear what you got to say. So the presumptive child support amount was $2,096.41. Um, like I stated, he still was in agreement to the upward deviation. So our agency recommendation was $2,350 per month. I don't see it still. I, oh. I just, um, mm -hmm. um, so the presumptive child support amount was $2,096 and 41 cent. Um, the upward deviation was $254, which brought it to the $2,350, um, which was our agency recommendation. Okay. And so, so, Miss, Miss, um, sorry, Miss Odom, what is your issue with the worksheet as it's presented? Sure. So this worksheet was presented um, after I lost my job. And not only that, the everything, all that, all this evidence is not even true because I don't even make that much. Um, that's number one. And then number two, my son has autism. We just found that out as well. And as much as trouble, it's his behavior on the spectrum of autism. And so for the last three years, um, I've even given that to the state of Texas. Um, the behavior has gotten so bad that I, I'm really okay. coming Mr. off my Bryant, job. Pastor Bryant, I'm, I'm gonna just say Mr. Bryant. Mr. Bryant doesn't reside in, in, in Georgia? He does. So why are, why are you doing it then, Ms. Harris? I'm confused. Because they, um, she, uh, is utilizing division of child support services. So in, I think it was two years ago, she got our services. So we did the consent order. Oh, so for, you kept saying, okay. Yes. Yes. So even though our, our actual DCSS order is a 24, uh, I'm sorry, a 22 CV, the underlying order is the 16 16 CV. Yes, Your Honor. Got it. Okay, so the um, the special needs of the child, the, you you have a two hundred fifty four dollars. Is is it that Miss Odie is saying that the special needs of the child is more than that two fifty four? I, yes. I I do want to interject and say she did not provide that. Everything that she provided us information for, we gave her credit for. That includes health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, and after school daycare. Okay. But your your honor to object yeah. to what she's saying. Oh, hold, 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 uh -huh. hold on, one moment. Okay. So what 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 were the special needs? So he needs to be in classrooms that are smaller than what he has. Um, other than that, he's always going to have a behavior issue, and this is a recent um, um, issue. Yes, right where you in? Raise your right hand. The asylum is where I affirm the testimony about to give to the courts the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you die. 
Yes. All right. So tell me what what's happened um, from the beginning, or no, for the issues dealing with the 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 deviation. Sure. Um, so I lost my job in July, and I've been in the system with Georgia and Texas since 2020, which is the pandemic. Um, I have tried so, to ask. So why, for, why? Huh? Why, why Texas? When I just went back, when I looked at the oh, case. Oh, yeah. So I had to move. Yeah. I've moved four times because he has bothered me. So in Georgia, when my uh, I it was my address was on there, they took in hinges off my door. They have moved someone in across the way. These are his friends. So I had to move to Florida with my grandmother. When I moved to Florida with my grandmother, then he sent his cousin there. I had to move from Texas. I had to move from Florida. And then I finally went to Texas. I came to Texas. He vetted my um, he vetted my residence. People, they have told my car. They have slandered my tires. They, I mean, I have been through the ringer with this man and he's pretending like, oh, I'm on the stage just preaching. You're not. You are really trying to uh, negate the fact that I to meet you and to see and to say, hey, this is my truth. And I need more money now because of my son. And I had lost my job. Now, mind you, I just got a new job. All this is new information. They don't want to talk to me. Every time I talk to Texas, they say, oh, well, Georgia has 90 days to respond. Then when I'll have no days to respond, it's always what well, Georgia laws are this. I mean, four years, Judge, four okay. years, and I'm finally seeing you now. OK, so I want to make sure I understand. Right now, where do you live? I live in Texas, Dallas, Dallas, Texas. OK. okay. You mentioned that at one point, I'm assuming you were in Baltimore because it looks like the original. No, file. I was never in Baltimore. No, I was in Georgia. Mm -mm, oh. I was never in Baltimore. You never in Baltimore. OK, no, I never lived there. No. OK, well, I always lived well, in Georgia. Georgia. When I first when we you opened lived? up the case, it was in Georgia. Uh, uh, so your relationship was in Georgia or was it in somewhere else? Where was the relationship? Georgia. OK. So the relationship was in Georgia mm -hmm. and, and, and then, um, you filed for what paternity, um, paternity in, mm -hmm. in Georgia, in, Georgia. Mm -hmm. in 2016. Yes. Okay. And then, um, it looks like at some point you guys must've come to some resolution. Cause I don't remember hearing this case. Okay, remember they had we had the two attorneys. My attorney turned on me, went to his side, and I was trying to tell you at the day of the closing, I said, I don't agree. I don't agree. And you was like, it's it's too late. They already signed it. Um, my attorney actually sued me for fifteen thousand dollars that you awarded him for in Fulton County instead of in DeKalb County. I had to challenge his bar association and he dropped the case because Jamal did not pay him the 15,000, like he said, because Jamal wanted this case to go the way he wanted it to go. No, 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 I don't know what you're talking about with regard to attorney's fees. I'm looking at this file. The last thing that I had to do with this file was in 2000. The last filing was a notice of dismissal that, that okay, that might be a volunteer, unless that was some type of contempt. I have you filing a notice, a notice of volunteer dismissal in November. No, that wasn't me. Oh, no. Yeah. I've been I've been challenged in this this case for a long time. No, this is you. This is your it it it's notice of voluntary dismissal, but it maybe let me see what it might be. It might be on a contempt. Let's see. Did you file a contempt against him? Uh here yeah. lately? I haven't filed anything. The only thing I can say I've been responding to Georgia when I've re uh in there. Now no, no, ma'am, you filed this. It was you filed this no, October 3rd, 2017 motion for contempt and sanction. Um, yeah, that's because that was the attorney that turned on me. Yes, that's that's why that is the way it is, because he turned on me and he sued me for fifteen thousand dollars. They play games well, with your court. So this this fifteen thousand dollars is dealing with. You said the you awarded my attorney fifteen thousand dollars, and my attorney said at the end, when everything was said and done, and you ruled out on it, 
you said, uh, and I told you, I said, I don't agree. I don't agree. And he was, Jamal was actually on the phone. He didn't even come to your court. And I said, I would never agree to him being on the phone in the court. And then all of a sudden, when I seen the decree of what you, what you signed because of the attorneys, it was um, sealed. It was, um, it was all kind of things. And then that man turned on me and he sued me for $15,000 that you awarded him for. And no, I challenged I, I, his bar license. No, that's not true. I would not have sealed. I may have sealed his finances, but I would not have sealed. A, a, it's I'm, all I'm saying is sealed. This our our um, case is sealed, and it's been sealed. I did they, not. They sealed it. And the only reason why I'm here is because I had to go no. to child support court because of attorneys. No, and something. I don't. I'm seal, sorry. I don't, I don't seal baby cases. No, ma'am. I don't. What I sealed was their finances, the financial information. The court hereby, um, it, there was an emergency motion to seal, and I ordered to compel the motion to discovery and exhibits thereto shall be sealed. Not the case, just those exhibits relating to your finances and also your final, but not the whole case. This case is not sealed. It is it is a public view case, but I did, and if it did get completely sealed, that's not what the order says. I order I, the clerk of court is hereby ordered to seal plaintiff's July 8, 2016 motion to compel discovery. I did not seal this case. I don't seal. I don't seal cases like that. No, ma'am. That's not me. Okay. So this case right here was um, this. The it, it might now the clerk may have misinterpreted and sealed the whole map, the whole file. But that was not my order. My order was I was trying to seal the finances. So that it, no one would understand know exactly what Mr. What uh, Pastor Bryant made because of you know just kind of circumstances and the fact that he was a pastor of a mega church in Baltimore at the time. Now, I know currently he's he's at, at Newburgh, but at the time he was at a, it was a mega church in Baltimore, and that was the issue that the attorneys had presented to the court. So mm -hmm. then I. And I have done that. And I do that for a lot of people who have high income finances that might run into conflict with various things. I might seal the finances, but I don't seal cases um, generally with regard to children. Like if something happens, somebody doesn't want the case to be known to the public. No, I don't do that. There, there has to be a real, a real reason for that. Generally, a safety reason for that. But I'm not going to seal it simply because you know. Um, you know, someone is saying that they don't want anyone to know about their per their personal issues. No, I don't do that. So I'm not saying that the case is not filed, but I'm not I'm saying that that is it's not sealed. But that is not what my order tells the clerk to do. It may have been misinterpreted that way and it got sealed. Um, but and even when I look at it, it doesn't it doesn't have the seal marks on it, even from my side. But I'm not sure. OK, because I it didn't have it on my side either. Um, it's sealed on your side. No, it was not. The only no, thing that was still on our side was the child support worksheet and addendum. Yes, ma'am. Everything else, this is not a sealed case. I just want you to want to make sure we get that straight first. And what was the second thing you said you think I did? Because that doesn't sound like me. Tell me what else you said I think I did. No, you I said, didn't say anything else you said you did. I'm saying you're saying that I filed a content and then I never did that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm you sorry. did. Did it? You did it, Miss Harris. I'm saying, what I'm saying is the attorney. The attorney no, shies me. I'm not saying the attorney shies you. I don't know about that. I'm telling you, these things are in your name with the same signature that I'm looking at from one they page. Could have copied it. They could have did anything. I didn't no. do that because I've been trying to get um, extra funds in the well. First, when I first did this, this was about him not paying. Okay, time. Before you, before you deny it, let's see it, okay? Because I okay. think you probably because I'm looking at both the signatures from from the first time you filed to the last. This is the same signature, um, and it's and it was dismissed by you. But and and, and I'm actually kind of getting away from the real issues while we're here today. But I just want I'm, I'm I went back and tried to understand what was going on in the file and what happened. But I'll, I'm going to send these. I'm going to share it with you in a minute. But um, no, you you got rid of that contempt now. What this contempt is about could be related to the attorney's fees. Let me see real quick. Let me see. Jamal, contempt of court for failing to pay the above. Ms. Wistfully complied. Jamal Paris has failed and willfully refused to comply with paying plaintiff's attorney's fees in the amount of $13,500.
So I indicated that he was supposed to pay your attorney's fees. Yeah. And then the attorney that I had turned around and sued me in um, Fulton County is what I'm saying. And he served me at my home. Yes. Um, and I that, had to. That, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I don't know what. Look, I don't know why you did what you did. All I know is you brought it to the court. I would have taken care of it because I would have, he is supposed to pay your attorney's fees. And he, as of today, he still is responsible for paying this money for you to you. That's what it looks like here. That, whether you file that again is up to you, but you, you withdrew it. I don't know why you withdrew it, but you did. On the 17th, before I could order it, before I could order for him to pay you that money, you withdrew it. So I assumed he must have paid it because it that's what it says here. I didn't well, do it. Because you. yeah. you're basically, then you're saying the attorneys forged your name on this document. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it. it looks like the same information. It's it. And it was dated October 3rd, 2017. But um, he was still, so, he was still my attorney at that time is what so I'm what, saying. And then we have email going back and forth. What I'm saying, trying to sue me again. I see that there are two documents that I can see now have been sealed. That's it. The whole other file is, I, I just double checked, the whole other file is available to the public. As far as the attorney's fees, I did not require him to, I did not require you to pay his attorney's fees. I required him to pay your attorney's fees. When he, did attorney's pay, fee. when he did not pay them, you were required to tell me that, and then I would make him pay them. But before I could make him pay them, you took the case back. Now, I know your position is you don't receive it. Let me ask, see if Miss um, Miss Harris, see if you can pull, can you pull up this case for me and um, let me see it and share it so she can see what we're talking about? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so go, it's um, it's 16 CV, 16 CV, 1613. Okay. And, and the document that she originally filed um, was dated on, let me see. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like I did a contempt order. Let me see. It looks like I did a contempt, contempt order. It looks like I did a June 5th contempt order. That was for insurance because he yeah. still doesn't have insurance card and life policy and all that. Okay. And then, okay. So then you're right. So it looks like I did an order, but then you filed another contempt. This was a motion for contempt that you filed on October 13th. Uh huh. October 13th. Look for the one for October 13th. Okay. And then see if you can share it so she can see what I'm talking about. I am. Uh, I see the motion for contempt. Mm -hmm. It's October 13th. Open that one. So I have the motion. Can you see it? Yep. Go to the bottom. Right there you this go. Is that your signature? That's my signature. Uh huh. That's your address and that's your email address and that's where the notice sent went. That's that's a motion you filed. Go up. Go to the top so she can see. So I have the motion. Can you see it? Yep. Go to the bottom. Right there. You this, go. Is that your signature? That's my signature. Uh huh. That's your address and that's your email address and that's where the notice sent went. That's that's a motion you filed. Go up. Go to the top so she can see. That's what. That's how it looked. Motion for contempt and sanctions. I know I wouldn't have done that because of the way it is. That is from that. I'm telling this who, who this is from. This is from that man. He's he is grimy. Uh, what's his name? Bill Lester is the attorney. Is that your signature? I, I, That's I my signature. I don't doubt he might have helped you file it because it is set up like an attorney. But that is your signature. And if no, you didn't, he didn't help me file anything. He might have filed that on his own. Is well, what I'm telling you. He could have, I mean, I signed it because I, he was, he, I was his client. So you I, did. But, sign. No, I'm saying I have signed something, but I'm not saying I signed this. I would have never retracted it if I did it. I used to work for an attorney. I wouldn't take it back if I filed it because they were coming at me. What I'm, I, I don't know what happened. What I'm trying to tell you, whether it's you or your attorney, it's still you. OK, so if your attorney got you to sign it and you didn't know what you were signing and you decided to sign it anyway, it's still you. So this is your motion. And the after you saw, filed that motion before it looks like it looks like we got we put it we tried to hear it. 
because you 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 asked me for dates. It looks like you asked twice for dates, and uh, and then before it could be set, you filed a notice of dismissal. Showed the notice of dismissal on November second. Okay. And then the thing is, if you didn't file the motion, then that means you never thought you had a motion to con for, to co for contempt. So it makes because sense. It, that was in, it happened in Fulton. I didn't know that I could even do it in the cab. When he fight, when he was trying and to sue me, he filed it in um, right. And, and that might be the reason why you 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 might have dismissed it because it was in the wrong place. That could have been it, and you filed it again in Fulton. But in the cab, this is what happened. So I just want to see it. It says my no. I can't okay. see it. It I says can't. my sharing is paused. Okay, then let Miss Noah, Miss Noah, if you could okay. do it, November second. Yeah, all, all I was trying to make sure that you understood the reason why I took the time over here is because I know you seem very passionate about your matters, but I want to set the record straight with regard to what this court did or did not do. That's the only reason I'm taking the time to do this for you, because I want you to know what this court did or did not do. I did not seal anything um, regarding the whole of your case. I sealed some personal documents regarding your income and his. And that was only two documents that I that I that I. Um, that I seal. The other, everything else is available to your case. The next thing is I did not make him pay. You, I, I did not make you pay his attorney's fees. I'm I, now, if he didn't do it, then your attorney was, or you, or you get someone else to do it, file a motion to say, Hey, you know, Mr. Bryant didn't pay his attorney's fees. And then I will come in and go, Oh, Mr. Bryant, you got to pay these fees. So to the extent he has not paid your attorney's fees, you need to get an attorney because by law, my my order he was supposed to do it so i don't know if he's done it at this juncture or not but i did not do the reverse it wouldn't make sense for me to do the reverse you he makes x amount of he makes you know 10 times the amount you make there's no way i would have done that that's all i'm doing is clear the record with regard to what this court did because you need to understand i'm being objective and you got to trust what i'm doing so i'm going to make sure you understood what understand what i'm doing okay now that we've gotten that straight, let's go back to your to your to your original case. OK, okay. now tell me what it is that your son is doing that is not reflected in the child support worksheet that Miss Harris presented. What's going on? So I don't have insurance. I haven't had insurance since we started and we we came back to court for that. And he still doesn't have an insurance policy. You asked him to do that. You've also asked him to have um, a life insurance. We still don't have that. No, um, I want I don't want to make sure you understand one thing. There are two different types of matters that are happening to you right now. The mm -hmm. first is dealing with the actual legitimation of paternity case where I did some orders on them. OK, those orders. Now, I got to make sure that what's translating is something that I can handle in this case because they're two separate matters. And then he has to get noticed that you're complaining about the fact that he hasn't paid attorney's fees. So we can't deal with that right now because he hasn't been noticed with the fact that he hasn't paid attorney's fees. He would have, you would have to bring, you would have to file another motion under this 16 CV case, or you will, of course, you will file a, a whole different motion for contempt matter, um, whether that is wherever he lives at now. I don't know if he lives in the cab or lives in full time. I'm not sure where he lives. But you would have to file a motion for contempt in the county where he lives re relating to these things that I ruled on in 2017 or 2016. Now, if you're talking about child support, the things that they have picked up on right here and your, your fact that you want a modification of child support because you're asking them to you're asking um, the DA's office to or the Department of Children's Services to do a modification of your matter. And I don't mind doing it, but I wanna make sure there are certain things I can't touch. I can't touch them because they're brought under the wrong wrong file. And also they're, you're asking someone else to prosecute it, so they need to bring it because you're asking them to prosecute it. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Yes. Okay, so right now we're doing, we're gonna do a modification of those okay. things. It doesn't mean that if he hasn't paid, if he's supposed to do insurance and he hasn't done it, you can take that up. You can file a, a, a motion for contempt saying he has not paid. He has not put the children on, put the child on um, insurance. And we'll take that up. But for right now, 
I need to know what it is that needs to go in these sheets. Okay. Oh, sure. All right. So tell me what it is that you want him to pay for in this modification. Yeah, I want him to pay for the school that John has to go to now. Oh, what school does he have to go to? Um, it's <clears throat> there's two I've chosen that uh, have like ensured um, quality of life for John as far as like autism. It's called Legacy oh. Christian Academy. I hate to interrupt, but is he enrolled in these? Because you provided us a school that he's currently enrolled in. Yeah, and that school and does not. They're not. Um, yeah, that school doesn't even have the program that he needs for autism. But, but you that haven't enrolled him one. in the other one, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So he needs to be enrolled in another school so that but he can get the give you credit for education. that. But we can't give you credit for that until you a provide us proof that he's enrolled. So you didn't provide, the only thing you said in your objection is that you settled in Texas and that you stated, I request this, this case be transferred to Texas for a thorough review and reassessment. It is imperative that the court holds the nine custodial parent accountable, not only for financial obligations, but for a lack of involvement in our child's life. Ensuring the best interests of my child are met requires a comprehensive and updated evaluation, which it fails to, fails to provide. And what I'm saying is we gave you credit for everything that you provided us with, including health insurance. You provided us proof of Aetna health insurance. So we gave you credit for that on the worksheet. We, credit, we gave you credit for the after school care at the school he's, or whatever after school that you have him currently enrolled. And we the upward deviation yeah this just happened last week last wednesday and i don't even know where my social worker is she her email has bounced back so i don't know no one keeps up with me so i'm i'm here I, so I all this is new so so are you are you are you is it your position that you want texas to handle it yeah, because nobody has done anything to him. Like right now, no one holds him in the court of law for nothing. No, so he he is he nothing. He doesn't pay on time. You have ordered he him does, to pay on the so first. In he Georgia, pays on the no, no, no. Miss Miss one moment. One moment. In Georgia, the non-custodial parents have until the end of the month to pay. He has paid on time every single month. He typically pays the first week of the month, and I can the, show no, the pay history. I can show no, a pay I can show you my pay history. I will pull up my bank no, accounts. Miss Odom, you can't. At one point, you and I were having dialogue, okay? And Miss Harris watched and listened and did not interrupt. Now she's trying to present something as well. Give her a moment as well, okay? You'll have an opportunity to be heard, okay? All right, go ahead, Miss Harris. This is an intergovernmental case, which means he pays Georgia. Once Georgia receives the payment, Georgia sends it to Texas or wherever you are, and then your state distributes it to you. Whenever your state distributes it to you, doesn't have anything to do with us. But if he gets more than 30, once he, if he does not pay within 30 days, if he does not pay in the entire month, that's when he's in trouble. He pays, he has paid every single month, which is why he does not have an arrears balance. So when okay. you ask the other day, what's up with your payment? He had made his payment on November 8th. Whether or not you've received it, that's not that, that that's why I said you have to talk to your state because Texas is in control of when you receive the funds. Okay, we but he's giving and as soon Georgia as get, time. I'm sorry. He's giving to Georgia timely. Correct. Every single month he is given to Georgia timely. And it's typically bet like the first between the first and the eighth of the month. Okay. Do you understand that, Miss Odom, that there that there is a time frame from the money? going from Georgia to Georgia to Texas. And so there might be delay. Do you get that part? Yes, ma'am or no, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So so your position is, is that you feel like you're not getting the money. There are times wherein you do not get months. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. He knows okay. that he has 30 days. So one, one month he may pay the next month. Um, no. They're saying like, oh, he's giving $10,000. I'm like, where's the money? There's, okay. I don't have anything. I, provide, and that's I, Texas. I will pull up the pay history, Your Honor. Can I can you pay, pull up, can pull up the pay, pay history? history? So we're going to take a look at it. So, Miss Odom, what I what I need for you to do, I know this is hard because this is your baby and you want to make sure everything is taken care of. But you're going to have to calm down for a moment because if you bring your passions down a little bit, you'll 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 be a lot more objective about what we're trying to do. Okay. No one no one is trying to to hide the ball from you. 
No one is trying to make sure your son suffers. We're trying to make sure we do what's right. But sometimes when you're dealing with a lot of different governmental stuff together, it doesn't come out as smoothly as it's supposed to. But I don't want you to think there's some some conspiracy going on. So we're going to try to be as 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 transparent as we can, so you can leave here feeling like you understood what was happening. Okay. Okay. All right. So Ms. Harris, put up the pull it up so we can you can see what 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 it, what we see when he pulls that money in on a monthly basis. Okay. And that way yes. you could take a look at it. And then I want you to compare it with what you get from Texas. And that way you can go to Texas and say, hey. Georgia is doing this, but you guys are doing this, and you can try to figure out where your disconnect is. Okay, all right. You you see this? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry. It um. Oh, it's, I can see uh, it. Oh uh, well, that. You, so you see the pay history? Yep. Stars. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like at least um from April of 2024 until November of 2024. He looks like he paid it in the first week of each each month, but I can see that in March of 2024 there was fourteen hundred dollars, and then oh hold up that because the issue was he had also been overpaid. So at one point it was coming out of his paycheck. That's where you see the W, the W, and the payment source. That's uh wage withholding. So those those split payments are how our system was taking it out of his paycheck um, to equal the amount. There was also an issue once they did the accounting that he had an overpayment. So they also had to give him some of those, like these escrow amounts are payments that he was overpaid. So those checks went back to him because he was paying over the amount in some of them. Is that the E? Which, which ones went uh, back? Can we tell? Um, I believe, and I'm. This is the, what the case managers really do. But I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the E means it went to. I'm actually not sure. I could get one of the okay. supervisors in here who could okay explain what happened if okay. If okay. Support. Yeah, but I also okay. just want you to um, email this child support enforcement detail sheet to Miss Odom. Okay. Show give her the, the give her as many years as you can give her okay? okay this this goes all the way back to when we first got the case which was in 2022 all right i want you to so email three that three pages old, okay email that those three pages to miss odom miss odom you're going to get this sheet all right and then i want you to compare it to what you get from texas okay and therefore if if there's a date time if there's a date discrepancy of the time it takes for them to get the money to you I want you to tap, take, talk that to your person in Texas so they can handle that for you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna send that to you. Now, because I know you're concerned about the payments being late. In Georgia, we have a policy or the, the rule is he has to be more than 30 days late before a contempt can ha happen. Miss Harris is saying, when you look at this report, you'll see that did not happen. Consequently, no contempt has happened. If you disagree with that, you'll have an opportunity to bring that up. For, for right now, I want you to take the moment to go over your Texas records with your Georgia records, okay? All right. So what's the what's the next issue that you had, Ms. Odom? Um, for the school. The school. All right. Mm -hmm. now, right now, what type of what school is he going to and how much do you pay for that school? I don't pay for school. It's a um a charter school, but All they right. just don't have the teachers. Okay. To accommodate him for the autism. Yes. Okay. Do does he have a diagnosed autism? That is, you've taken him to a doctor or a psychiatrist, and there is psychiatrist, a psychiatrist. Yes. Uh, the doctor will be soon because they just did it last Wednesday when we found okay. out about it. What I'm asking you though is, right now, do you have a diagnosis? I yes. Okay. Yes. You have a diagnosis I, from whom? From the psychiatrist from okay. the school. The school or the the school psychiatrist. I guess the, the the school yeah works with this psychiatrist. So this psychiatrist was the one who found the diagnosis. So last year, like the end of last year, they tested him. It came back negative. But then the psychiatrist was watching him even closely, and they said no, 
he has it. So they did more tests this year. And that's when it was, this was like a recent thing. And so she said she wanted to retest them. They did. So Wednesday we went over the EIP um, okay. and everything is put in place for him, but okay. they just don't have the teachers there to help him and educate him. Okay. But right now you, he's in school. The likelihood is he'll stay there until the end of the year. Right? Yes. Okay. But at some point, you want to switch him to another school that's going to be more effective for his disability. Yes. What you're going to do, though, is when you get ready to do that, when you feel like there, you need to change or modify the, the plan, you need to, you're going to have to either get um, an attorney so that we can look at it. But for right now, we cannot modify or add in those documents because he's not in that program yet. And if this is something that you just started last week, it's certainly something we can't take care of right now because we don't know where he's going, whether or not that's going to um, uh, be something that the court will allow because it could be that the court finds that the school does have the ability to take care of it and it doesn't make sense for him to go someplace else. I'm not saying that's what a court would do. I'm just saying that's a possibility. So we can't include what was happening at that juncture because at this juncture because we don't have enough information to do that right now it doesn't mean that you won't be able to bring that up again and so that you'll be able to bring it up to do we know where mr mr um mr bryant lives like what ca what county does he live in your honor we do have his address on file what county the cab okay so he's in the cab which means it's going to come back to me because it's it'll end up being my case you you'll then have to file a motion to modify so that the so that that could be taken in because it's it'll end up being my case you you'll then have to file a motion to modify so that the so that that could be taken into consideration is that something that you're planning on doing because if you plan on doing that i can withhold on this issue and let you file it and we can deal with it later do you want to do that or do you want to take what we're talking about now I want to file it later. Okay. I want to file it so we can address it now. Okay. All right. Because so, even my money has changed too. So. Okay. So, so that's another issue. So, so the issue dealing with the school, that's a modification you want to do later, right? Because you mm -hmm. really need to find the school. He needs to get accepted into a school. We need a psychiatrist to say that it's necessary. You need to prepare a case, right? To, to, for that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. Then next is that your position is they have you down for $5,000 and you don't make $5,000. No. What do you make? Uh, at this current time, I am on um, a work plan, basically. So, okay. yeah. What does that mean? So that, is someone else talking? No, I'm asking you, what does that oh. mean? Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so I do um, unemployment right now. I lost my job in January. Um, you lost January, your job? July 2nd. July 2nd. And so right now, how much do you get? Every two weeks, it's uh, 2000 uh, No, for the month, it's 2000 So every week, I am making 1000 All every right. Every two weeks, I'm making 1000 Every two weeks, you make 1000 Yeah, it's like, like $1,134. And do you anticipate getting another job and making the salary of 5000 ra ra rather soon? No, I did get a job, but I don't start yet. I'm just taking like drug tests and um, background check and all that. And that is only $16 working with American because I'm in school. Okay. And your honor, just so you're aware, this yeah. the income we used for her is income that she provided for herself. And we were not notified by she or the... IJ that including in her objection that she no longer earned that amount of money because okay. that is one of the things that we could have taken into consideration and brought before you with the worksheet. She does know because I told her through email and text and she said, when did that happen? Did you tell Texas? I said, yes, I told Texas Correct. when it happened. I went up there um, to the um, the office in Plano and told them, and Ms. they're so rude to me. They don't they don't Ms. hear Ms. nothing I say. Everything I say Ms. is like yes. Ms. Ms. Listen to me. 
we're, uh, that that might have happened. That's not what we're saying. What she's saying is, did you or not? Did you provide the fifty one hundred dollars to Miss Harris X amount of days ago? No, it wasn't X amount. It was last year. Okay, They're just last, now seeing this. It was last year. They never said, well, let's do an update. It's, on okay. The money. it's, oh, it's okay. It, it, it's, it's not. It's not. It's okay. Okay. No, no need to argue it. We're just asking. You gave her that number at some point, correct? Mm -hmm. At the time you gave it to her, it was true and correct. Correct. At some point, it was not correct because you lost your job in January. July. Yes, ma'am. When you lost your job in July, did you contact Ms. Harris and say that number is now wrong? No, she was not part of the plan. I was talking to uh, social workers at that time, so I didn't even know. She became part of the plan just recently right. with and me as far as communication. Correct. And that's what she's saying. She's just saying she didn't know until recently. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. So now that we know that there is a, 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 a change in your income, then that is something that can be considered. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. But your position is you're going to start another job. And when you start that job, how much money will you be making per week? I don't know because it's part time. Um, I just know that it's sixteen dollars. That's what okay. I do know. When you when you start this job, will you come off unemployment? Yes, I have to. I have a choice. Yeah. Right. Do you anticipate making at least two thousand dollars a month? At least. Yes. OK. Do you. OK, is it possible for you make to make more than two thousand dollars a month? I, I really don't know just because of the scheduling that I have. I, I cannot say that. Okay. I want to, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Miss Harris, can you put put her income at two thousand dollars a month? Let's see what it is. Be. So we're going to put this on a temporary basis anyway, because she okay. wants to. We're going to do it only temporary so she can do what she needs to do. Put it okay. at 2000 see what it looks like. Okay. Uh, the one thing I also need to do to make sure that it's accurate uh, is I'm going to remove the deviation right here so we can see what it would be without the upward deviation, if that's okay with you. Okay. Or do you want to keep it? Yeah, we're going to keep it the upward de deviation. The income is 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 high. That uh, upward deviation is probably going to re be reflective. But would you want that specific number or is there a number, another number? Because this number was based on the 2350 that he's paying. So this the 254 right here uh -huh. was a number selected to make the math add up to the 2350 that he was already paying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, but yes the deviation of how, how much money how much money per month are you spending miss miss odom for the needs the the for the educational needs of your child this just started so i can't even i just thought it was i just thought he had bad behavior um but i can just say me coming off from work to do that i cannot give you the actual number because this is just new to me like all of this I actually do have to change it because it's given in the presumptive amount, it's given her a negative number. Um, okay. Here it is. So let me. Okay. I'm just getting into it, like the education behind it and what he needs. And um, I just know for three years straight, his behavior was so bad. I just, I wanted to give up. I didn't know what to do. So we finally got him. Well, I finally got him tested. Um, so Right now, what 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 medical care is he on? He's not on any medical care. It's just the teachers. They're not. No, I'm certified. saying you're not, the medical. What medical program? What insurance does your child currently have? Oh, United Health. Who pays for that? Me. How much do you pay? A month is six hundred dollars for the both of us. Okay. So Did you we have her health insurance at? Um, she has it at JSX for Edna, and I don't work. Yeah, so she has the old stuff. Okay, so the three you ha you pay, so give her three hundred for for insurance. Nothing is updated because it was all last year uh, when that's, we submitted this. Yes, that's what we're doing. We're trying to make sure we have what the numbers are. So three hundred per month. Three hundred. All right. I'm not sure. That one. That 190, 195, 25, put that in the special 
because that means that she's she's not she's not to me that means she's under what's necessary for her to care for the child. So that 195, 194.25, put that in special. Put it where, I'm sorry, in special. And deviation, upward deviation, as an upward deviation. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. For in his column, correct? Yep, yep, okay. so that equalizes her, because otherwise she'll be in the zero for take, trying to take care of the child. Okay, that's the child support amount. I'm going to leave that as on a temporary basis so that you can do what you think you need to do for the other education issues. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. So this is going to be temporary. All right. That's the order of the court. And your honor, when would you like for us to come back? Um, well, let's uh, miss 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 um, Odom. When do you anticipate filing your motion? Um, soon as I, I guess I have to enroll him in school first. Is that what you're telling me? I, I'm not, I'm not advising you to do anything. I'm just telling you, you, you need to move like you like you desire to move, but you might need to talk with someone or talk, get some legal advice. I can't tell you that. All I'm saying to you is that you can file a motion. You don't I mean, you don't necessarily well, have to move them. You can, you can file a okay. motion to be able to do that without having doing it, without having doing it first but what okay. we're saying is we can't put into this worksheet until the court rules that it should be done and here's what the numbers are going to look like it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to move him before you file the motion you can file the motion with the intent to move him that is something you're going to talk with your attorney about right well what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on 120 days let's see where you are at that point um hopefully you'll file it if you haven't filed it at that point then we'll come back and try to figure out what we're, whether we're going to make this permanent or not okay and then once we do that, um, is there any way after this we can put this case in Texas where I live? Well, is that you, an option? You you can do whatever you think you need to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Talk, you need to talk with somebody about what you need to do. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you.